Hello. Welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please make sure you have your notes that accompany this lesson in your textbook in your notebook ready so that you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for listening to this lesson. This lesson covers a quick overview of the anatomy and physiology of the ear, ear structures, and RN assessment methods for ears. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand that communication is essential for the patient and family. When this is impeded by hearing loss, the nurse must teach patients and their family new ways of communication. You should be able to review the needed assistance with communication as well as ear hygiene safety and hearing changes associated with aging. You should be able to teach patients regarding the medications that affect hearing as well as the diagnostic aids to assist with diagnosis diagnosing hearing problems. In reviewing the anatomy and physiology of the ear and uh, other ear conditions, we need to remember that the ear along with the brain is the organ that enables hearing. Hearing is one of the five senses that is important with communicating with the world. It allows the assessment of surroundings. It allows independence. It warns us from danger. It allows us to appreciate music, work, play, and interactions with other people. Ear and hearing problems are common among uh, adults of all ages and it's important for the nurse to remember that an assessment of the ear and hearing is an important skill for nurses in any care environment. Therefore, you need to make sure that you understand the anatomy and physiology of the ear. If you have not had a chance to review that recently, it would be a good idea to go ahead and review what an adult ear anatomy looks like and what composes the external ear and what composes the middle ear and uh, the inner ear. Okay, many ear and hearing problems develop uh, over long periods of time and may be affected by drugs and systematic, systemic health problems. And hearing occurs when sound is delivered through the air to the external ear canal and the temporal bone covering of the mastoid air cells. Um, the sound waves create a vibration which are vibrations which are extremely transmitted, uh, ultimately transmitted to the cochlear, which changes the vibrations into action potentials that are conducted to the brain. The nerve impulses that are processed and interpreted by the brain uh, uh, come from the sound. In discussing assessment methods for ears, it's important for the RN to remember that all older adults should be screened for hearing activity acuity and uh, there's many scales and tools that are available uh, to assist hearing loss that a nurse can use and you can also start by asking the patient do you have any hearing problems and uh, you can go from there that's going to help you. You want to obtain a thorough history from the patient before performing the physical exam. You need to remember that hearing assessment begins with the actually observing the patient uh, and listening to the patient and seeing how they answer questions. Okay, the patient's posture and appropriateness of the responses provides you with information about whether they have a hearing problem or not. You want to obtain data on demographics, demographics and personal and family history and socioeconomic status and job-related re exposure to loud noises. And you want to ask them about any current health problems and the use of remedies for ear problems that they've used at home. Any personal history including past and current history of ear pain, ear discharge, vertigo, tinnitus, decreased hearing and a difficulty understanding people when they're talking to them or any uh, history of working in an environment that has a lot of noise is uh, important to note. Any relevant history that includes any trauma, surgery, infection, ear hygiene, exposure to loud noise, swimming habits, and hereditary problems, all those should be noted, including smoking and nutritional deficiencies. You want to ask the patient about their potentially ototoxic drug history. If they've had any, uh, any family history is important. We already talked about that. You want to ask the patient about hearing problems or any other problems a family member has had to assist the genetic component. Okay, you know that the, any hearing loss from a genetic component is usually seen in childhood. So uh, genetic problems can lead to progressive hearing loss in adults. Um, 
you want to assess any year related problems you want to ask patients if they have any trouble okay uh, you want to ask about any uh, changes in hearing um, you want to ask them about any intolerance to so sound levels that uh, if uh, you want to ask them about ringing a dizziness any vertigo you want to inspect and palpate and examine uh, the ear itself you want to inspect the ex entire external ear and uh, you want to look at that you uh, you you want to use a separate speculum cover for each ear when you're conducting an otoscopic exam that's really uh, important when you're using the otoscope you want to slowly and gently introduce uh, the speculum into the external ear canal during assessment you don't want to hurt the patient use contact precautions if the patient who has any drainage in the ear you want to make sure that you have gloves on do not perform an otoscopic exam on a confused or uncooperative patient that makes sense and you want to avoid per, uh, uh, perforating the eardrum uh, with an otoscope you want to assess for lesions a foreign body uh, you want to look in there you want to assess eardrums for intactness the color and the lesions and the shape and mobility you want to assess the hearing acuity of the patient uh, when you talk about hearing loss it's important for you to review the following uh, you know that he hearing is going to be categorized three ways the first is going to be conductive hearing loss which results from physical obstruction of sound waves uh, transmission such as a foreign body in the external canal or retracted or bulging tympanic membrane or fused bony ossicles we also have sensory neural hearing loss which is from a defect in the cochlear and the eighth cranial nerve in the brain itself Mixed conductives on systems or narrow hearing loss is going to be a profound hearing loss coming from both the conductive and the sensor neural hearing loss the patient may become irritable frustrated and depressed because they can't hear very well and uh, they may have uh, they may isolate themselves from not being able to hear you want to ask them about their social and work relationships to determine if they're isolating themselves because of hearing loss let's quickly review diagnostics for our ears we know that lab results are generally not going to be value as far as you're trying to check hearing acuity but you may do a culture in and you may do an antibiotic sensitivity of any infectious agents that are growing in the ear a CT uh, scan with contrast or without contrast may show structures of the ear in a greater detail um, um, uh, CT may be helpful in diagnosing acoustic tumors MRIs are non-invasive non-radio uh, active diagnostic tool that is used uh, to come up with uh, pictures to see the soft tissue changes in the brain auditory brain stem evoked potent, uh, responses uh, are going to be used to uh, assess hearing in patients who are unable to indicate or unreliable indicating whether they are recognizing sound uh, or from hearing uh, an electro nystog nystagmography and ENG is a test that is sensitive in detecting both central and peripheral disease of the vestibular system in the ear so the ENG is going to record nystagmus and it's going to have uh, or involuntary eye movements and uh, it can also uh, check um, balance issues a caloric testing may be done to evaluate the vestibular portion of the auditory nerve all these tests are really covered well in your textbook if you're not familiar with the test I urge you to go ahead and look it up an audiometry is a measurement of hearing acuity uh, so that's something that you would also see um, there may be some speech discrimination testing uh, to see if the patient is able to discriminate among similar sounds or among words that contain similar sound and a tympanometry a tympanometry a tympanometry is uh, assesses the uh, mobility of the eardrum and structures of the middle ear and that's also helpful I cannot say big words today but uh, there's lots of uh, stuff on um, diagnostics that you need to review if some of these are not you're not familiar with 
In summary, let's include some reminders uh, for patient teaching. You want to teach the patient the proper way to clean the external ear, and you want to identify patients at risk for hearing impairment from uh, their work or their lifestyle. You want to encourage all patients, even if they already have a hearing uh, impairment, to use ear protection in a loud uh, environment. You want to inform patients who smoke that smoking increases the risk for developing hearing problems. Allow the patient the opportunity to express any fear or anxiety because of their hearing loss. You want to explain all diagnostic procedures, restrictions, and follow-up care for patients scheduled for tests and for patients who cannot hear. Thank you for listening in to this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this review of the anatomy and physiology of the ear, ear structures, and are in assessment methods for ears. If you have any questions about this lesson or their corresponding notes, please feel free to email me. Have a lovely day.